So talk to us about some of the women, because that's who a lot of my counterparts and friends who have come to mm-hmm. see you have just had such transformation because of these seasons that they're in. Yeah. So we've recently, within the last, I don't know, year or two, there's been a lot of authors in functional medicine writing about cycling and hormonal cycling. And it's been very disconnected from God mm. at every turn. Yeah. And so I just kept being like, I have a question. I have a qu-. like, I have another <laughs> I question. I love that. <laughs> God. I mean, I made our womb, our reproductive system. And so that's where the part I've been linking it for women where it's like, let's discuss scripture. Let's discuss your womb. Let's discuss your mm-hmm. hormones. Let's not discuss them in separate aspects. So your, good. your faith is going to dictate your hormone health. And wow. none of the books are telling you that. Yes. But I'm here to tell you that that's a huge piece of, you know, and in the day-to-day world, that's like nervous system regulation, but who regulates our nervous system better than God? Yeah, that's so <laughs> good. Wow. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's helped women just unravel what they thought they needed to do for their hormones. They're like, mm. well, I started sea cycling or I started taking this or I started doing that. And it's like, Put your nervous system at the centerpiece of that. Put God at the centerpiece of that. And then let that span out from there what your tools need to be. And it'll make more sense then. Yeah, I even see you mentioned kind of the demonic realm or the control that the enemy has in some of these spheres that we're speaking to, both faith and health and many more. Um, and, And as you were saying this last example, I was thinking of like, crystals and sage and stars and moon alignment and like people doing these sound baths and these pieces that I I do truly believe aren't all wrong. There's astrology biblically, like God is in all of that, but the way in which it becomes the idol is mm-hmm. the thing that's wrong because God made it Sage didn't just appear to be a witchcraft tool. So can you teach right. us a bit about that side of it as well? Yeah. I, I mean, I think what a lot of, we, we're we just tied to the moon because we're outdoor creatures. I mean, yeah. this whole like, <laughs> we're just 29 day women. Women are just linked up because we're supposed to be outside more than in. I mean, Good. it's just the way God made us. So yeah. making it all into this astrology, powerful moon pulling us. And, and it's like, no. And so when women aren't cycled up to the moon, they're, they're probably just not outside enough. <laughs> so I mean, good. Let's just break this down. Oh, it's kind of, we're just kind of pulled to nature because that's just yeah. the, the way the ebb and flows of seasons are, are part of how we are as creatures too. But nothing about that is to be used as a tool, as a beacon for how we mm-hmm. operate our day-to-day life. There, so There is no crystal that will fix that. That's you know, it's all, and so yes, the whole hormone world right now for women is very, very new agey, and like you said, some of it is wonderfully backed biblically and ancestrally. Yeah, and you know, women would gather and sing and pray, and yes, use frequencies, and but we don't know how we did that once upon a time. So we're trying, <laughs> it's very far removed. Yeah. So we're trying to tap into that, that deep wisdom that God literally wove into our beautiful womb. It makes us so complex, but we're having a hard time implementing that in a larger sphere because women are being very, it's very hard to be strong in a faith where you don't allow some of that to creep in. Discernment needs to be the word of the year for the next decade or something. I don't know. (laughs) For sure. sure. Well, and I think that's where it comes down to even from the discernment of our own health and our own bodies and knowing what feels right and what doesn't. Um, I have also friends who have dealt with cancer already in the young ages of 30 and 40 and on up from there and processing, how do I handle this homeopathically, do I blend medicine with the response? And um, sometimes people being made feel, felt guilty if they decide to go that route and or they fear they have more fear because they think that that's the only solution. And so how, how are you helping people navigate like what medicinally makes sense at over the counter and or being prescribed mm-hmm. at large versus what can we do to, to just one at a time? Just like, let's just swap these out and watch what happens. Are you more of a slow immersion kind of homeopathic supporter? Or are you like, let's jump in. Let's actually, let me tell you all the reasons these are terrible. And let's start now. 
It well, it depends on the severity of the situation. Sure. So if it's cancer, obviously we're going to switch out everything. But at the foundation of what I do, I do use data. So I'm I'm trained to interpret lab work. Wow. And so I can look into a body, someone's body through stool, urine, blood, and I can just look for clinical correlations, depletions, disruptions, toxic burden, infections. At the end of the day, these things are all happening in our bodies yeah. and help them make sense of what's the most actionable thing to take on first. Hmm. So cancer is an extreme case because we have to run tox screen labs, gut labs. We have to run all the labs and we have to unravel that very quickly, the root of cell mutation. But preventative health-wise, it's yeah. often just let's address nutritional deficiencies. Let's figure out, make sure you're going poop every day. Yep. <laughs> the good stuff. Yep. I mean, really, like just we, we start on a more simple level. Let's just get yeah. you feeling like your detox capacity, yeah, capacity awesome. works pretty well. Yeah. Um, I would say if it's not an extreme case like cancer where we have, an, we have to move and do this quickly, then it would be more of a personality. And I would say about 10% of my clients are like, I will go all in and change everything now. Yeah. And the other 90% are like, please be gentle with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm trying really hard. Yeah. I totally get that. 